Welcome everyone to my channel, my name's Adrian and this is my very first F1 2022 My Team Career Mode. I've been playing F1 games on and off since I was a kid and I've been watching so many different My Team Career Modes over the last year or so on YouTube and they look like so much fun so I thought to myself, why not finally give it a go? So first things first, we need to set our career entry point and as fun as it would be to go right in and start challenging for the title straight away, we are a brand new team, we are in it for the long haul, and I think it's only right we start from the bottom and work our way up the F1 ranks. So we are going to start as a newcomer. And of course, I'm going to leave driver moves on, and I've heard quite a lot of people say that if you keep the acclaim rate at either default or increased, it allows you to catch up with the AI really quickly. So I'm going to set the AI acclaim and cash rate to increased, but I'm actually going to set my own to reduced as I look to make this career mode as difficult as possible for myself. I'm also hoping by giving the AI more, more cash to splash, that might hopefully encourage more driver moves in further seasons. And with all that sorted, let's go ahead and start making our team. So as you can see from my team colours, I am very much going for a British theme with this team. But firstly, we got to give it a name and I'm not going to go for anything too complex right now. I'm just going to go with my initials. So our official name will be A&M Racing. Now, on to our sponsor. And I was looking at a lot of these and to be fair, they all look pretty doable. You've got finish in the top 10, get two constructors points even just complete a full season. Now, I'm feeling pretty punchy, and I think we can definitely get 15 points this season. Obviously, I've not driven the car yet, so it might be terrible, and this might be a very bad, bad decision, but right now I'm feeling pretty confident, especially with the weekly income and goal bonus of Xenon Dynamics. Xenon? Xenon? I'm gonna go with Xenon. Um, being so much higher than the other sponsors, so I'm gonna go with Xenon Dynamics as our primary sponsor for our first season. So for our engine, we have four different options to choose from. We've got Renault, we've got Red Bull, Powertrains, Ferrari, and Mercedes. And to be fair, there isn't a huge difference between them. Now for me, this is one of the most important decisions in the game so far. And whilst I do want to make sure we have a quick and durable car, we are, however, on a budget. And I did say we're going to be starting from the bottom and working our way up. So whilst to be fair, they do actually have a higher durability than the Ferrari, the Renault engine is technically the worst overall engine of the four. So we are going to start from the bottom. We are going to go for the cheapest option and we are going to go for Renault as our engine for our first season. And finally, our teammate. We actually have some pretty good options here. We've got Piastri, Drogovic, Lawson, and the focus of all of them is, is really high. However, he might not be the highest rated, but we are a British team and a British team needs an all-British lineup for its debut season in F1. So we're going to have to go with our fellow Brit, Jack Aiken, as our teammate. And to be fair to him, he's got pretty decent pace and awareness, so hopefully he'll be able to pick up a few points as the season progresses. So there we have it, our team a and Racing, sponsored by Xenon Dynamics, powered by a Renault Engine, and with an all British lineup of myself and Jack Aitken in the driver's seat. And that also still leaves us with a fairly chunky 900k to play with. So hopefully we can put that towards some decent upgrades at the start of the season. But for now, it's onto the fun stuff and it's our official livery for the new season. And as you can see, I'm very much going with the all British red, white and blue theme across the entire car. We've got dark navy blue on the front and rear wings white across the body of the car with the red strip down the middle and overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with this car you know for a first stab at creating a car I think it looks pretty decent and I'm hoping once we've been able to get a few sponsors on there it'll actually start looking like a proper F1 car 
as well. And finally, onto our logo, and of course, I wanted to stick with the red, white, and blue theme, but I also came across this pretty cool lightning A icon for our emblem, which I thought was pretty perfect for my name. So here it is. This is our official team logo for the upcoming season two. And there we have it. Logo done, livery done, our British based red, white, and blue team created. It's now time to move on to the factory to get this season started. Hello folks and welcome to this, a very special edition of Paddock Pass. We're here at the headquarters of Formula One's newest team for an exclusive first look at what they will be bringing to the sport. It's always an exciting moment to welcome a new team onto the grid. However, what makes this occasion a little more special is how strikingly different the cars are this year. Yep, the long-awaited new regulations are finally here, and with them, the start of the next era of Formula One. The 2022 season ushers in a change of direction to the regulations aimed at promoting closer racing. With new aero additions in the form of swooping front and rear wings, along with the new eye-catching 18-inch low-profile tyres that will push tyre technology to the limit. So then, the question remains as to whether this team can grasp the opportunity before them with both hands and lead the charge against the rest of the paddock. We'll find out soon enough, as the new season is just about to begin. But first, let's see the unveiling of the team's car and meet the owner of the brand new Formula One team. Well, first of all, thanks so much for inviting us here today. It's been wonderful to see behind the scenes. Uh, as you might expect, I've got about a million questions, so let's jump straight in. So I'm gonna rattle through these interview questions pretty quickly, but I've seen online and various other videos that the answers you give provide small boosts to different departments in your team. So I'm trying to answer the questions evenly to give kind of like a good spread across our aero, chassis, durability and powertrain teams, as I wanna make sure that our car is as balanced and as well-rounded as possible. Well, thank you so much for your time. I've uh, been wonderful to get an insight from you and of course to see around the headquarters. Thank you for today, really appreciate it. And thank you all at home for watching as well. We'll see you very soon. And with the interviews done, here we are at the factory for the very first time, the place where the magic happens, and we can finally get our F1 2022 My Team Career Mode started, and I am so excited. So first things first, we're gonna set up some activities before the first race of the season begins, and I was looking at the different options we had, and I didn't really wanna start by creating negativity in the camp, or spending what I thought were fairly decent sums of money. So I've gone with activities that only seem to have positives, and that's the six day driver training camp that will hopefully have a decent impact on Aitken's base stats so he can start trying to get us some points as quickly as possible and also the pre-merchandise sale activity as well we are a newly created team a cash trap team so every extra penny we can make will definitely help us now on to our facilities and I can see from the answers we gave it seems like we've been given a boost for our durability department so they've got up to spec one versus spec zero for everything else but to be fair, I'm, I'm very happy with that, as again, I've heard there tends to be quite a lot of DNFs in the team um, and on this game, so I'm happy to be stronger on the durability side of things, at least at the beginning. Anyway, and looking at the facility upgrades we can make, we've got fabrication, we've got build time, we've got quality control. So I know I've mentioned durability, and whilst I think it's important to obviously be able to build as many different upgrades as possible and as quickly as possible, I don't really see any point in building these upgrades super fast only for them to fail. So I want to put emphasis on improving quality control so that when we do upgrade, hopefully it has a much better chance of actually going through. And with 1.2 million, I can actually make a couple of quality upgrades in different departments. So as we've already got the durability at spec one, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the aero and chassis departments to begin with. 
So we have a 1000 R&D points to play with here. And to my surprise, we are not actually the bottom ranked team on the grid. That place is reserved very much for Williams. We are just above them for now, but how long that will last for, I don't know. And I'm trying to look through the different departments to see how we stack up against our competitors. And I can already see, along with Alpine, our powertrain is at the very bottom, which is not a good sign, considering we are the only teams powered by a Renault engine. And the problem with most of these upgrades is that they're not going to come in in time for the Bahrain Grand Prix. However, we have found a motor generator unit upgrade from our durability department that will come in before Bahrain. So we are going to go ahead and purchase that upgrade. We are already pretty high on the durability side, which is good to see. But in my eyes, a car can never be too durable. So I'm more than happy to go ahead and purchase that upgrade for now. And then maybe try and look to upgrade the other areas of the car as we go along. Unfortunately, those facility and R&D upgrades are successful and they do come in before the Bahrain Grand Prix, as well as further R&D points and discounts from our practice sessions. So we are in a very good place to go ahead over to Sakir for qualifying for our debut race weekend at the Bahrain Grand Prix. And straight away on our flying lap, we get stuck behind Stroll going into turn 10. Now, fortunately, he pulls over pretty quickly, so I'm hoping we're not going to lose too much time, if any, behind him as I'm trying to use DRS down the straight before heading up to turn 11. Pretty decent entry into turn 12. I'm just going to ride the curve slightly. As we go careering into the barrier, we lose our front wing. And what a terrible, terrible start to qualifying that is. I am doing the team budget no favours whatsoever. I'm going to need replacement parts straight away. And to add more misery to our session, Due to the time it takes to repair it, I don't even get back out in time for another lap. So we will end up qualifying with a DNF. So unfortunately, I went out a little too late with my first flyer, which then didn't give me enough time to go and do a second after the repairs had finished. So showing our inexperience as a team there, me, to be honest, showing my inexperience as a driver, as we have a disaster for our debut qualifying session. My teammate, well, he doesn't really fare too much better. He's out of Q1, out qualified by both Williams. Although surprisingly ahead of Lance Stroll, um, it is our team, Williams and Aston Martin, the three worst cars on the grid, all out in Q1. So no surprises there, I guess. But for us, we'll start on the back of the grid in our debut race. So a lot of work to be done as we head over to race day at the Bahrain Grand Prix. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best, of course, at turn one, and then another soon after into turn four. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into that tight left-hander of turn 10. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, Carlos Sainz, and Russell, Norris, Bottas, Ricardo, and Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Magnussen, Pierre Gasly, and Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, Joe, Alex Albon, and Sebastian Vettel, Latifi, Aitken, Stroll, and the rookie. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today, as once again, we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. So no surprises to see Charles Leclerc on pole. Max Verstappen though, he can only settle for third out qualified by his teammate Perez. Is that gonna be a recurring theme throughout this My Team season? Who knows, as Ferrari, Red Bull and both Mercedes make up the top six. So no surprises early doors at the top of the grid. 
Meanwhile, for me, I've not really gone for anything special. You know, the normal one stop, starting on mediums, then switching to hards midway through the race. Although, speaking of hards, I can see both Astins have chosen to start on the hard tyre. So, bold move for them. Whether it pays off later down the line, time will tell. One thing I did forget to do, once again, showing my inexperience as a driver, is to adjust and bring down the amount of fuel in the car. So, I just got the default fuel setting. I'm hoping that won't have too much of a dent in my lap times and as the last person on the grid I probably could have gone a little slower to try and cool down the tyres of the other cars on the grid but got a little distracted trying to find my mark which I managed to hit purple so never mind as we count down the lights to the Bahrain Grand Prix our debut Grand Prix and we have a great start off the line we get past Stroll immediately who's clearly struggling to find any grip whatsoever on those hard tyres as we now try and use ERS to chase down our teammate alongside Latifi as we go down the inside I did have to hit the brakes and think twice definitely don't want to make any contact with my teammate this early in the race but we do get a great run into turn three much better than Latifi we try and move to the right hand side to get the position but the straight line speed of that Williams means he is able to hold on to the position as we dive down the inside of turn four I'm going to try and squeeze Latifi out and we are able to get ourselves up to the lofty heights of P20. But a great start for a &M Racing. We are making up two positions and Aitken getting past the TV too. So things looking positive in Bahrain so far, at least on lap one, at least as we go into turn nine. Let's take a look at how everyone else started off the line. So Leclerc looks like he gets a decent start. He's going to pull up to the right to try and block off the right of Perez as it looks like a Haas pulling wide in the background. Looks like Leclerc goes wide. You've got the two Red Bulls are trying to cut down the inside. He does hold the inside line, but Perez gets the better exit. And Sergio Perez will go into P1. Leclerc is going to look like he's going to try and go down the outside. Perez blocks him off. Verstappen trying to go down the inside. You've got Sainz. Verstappen have their own battle. Hamilton and Russell having their own battle. Norris and Alonso behind them. Norris manages to get ahead of Alonso, so he's got more pace than that. McLaren early doors. You've got Ricardo and Magnussen. They've got their own little battle. They're going to go too wide down into turn eight. Ricardo's going to have the inside line, but the Haas is going to have the better exit. He's going to have more straight line speed going down round turn nine into turn 10. Is he going to be able to hold it? Looks like he is, but they are literally too wide as we're trying to now follow down the rest of the grid. You've got Guan Yu Zhou, Vettel, he's actually had a decent start to be fair. P16 on the hard tyre, I wasn't really expecting that. Albon behind him, Schumacher way down the list as my teammate Jack in 19th. I'm right behind him, Latifi in 21st and Lance Stroll. Well, he is really struggling on those hard tyres. Quite a poor start for him as I almost go into the back of my teammate coming down the main straight at the end of lap one. We are in the same machinery, so there shouldn't be an issue with straight line speed here. I'm gonna use ERS, go along to the right-hand side. I am surely, surely gonna make the move. Brake late, go down the inside. I think I locked up the right rear there. I'm just gonna try and make sure I give him enough space. Don't wanna make any contact with him. Early doors, you have got to be kidding me. His engine has just blown up. You've got to be kidding me. Jack is out of the race. I don't think I touched him. I don't think there was any contact. And it is literally... I am now the only person in our team in the race. Unbelievable. I've spent the last 15 minutes talking about durability and how it's important that we don't DNF. And two laps in, Jack's engine has just gone pop. And he's out of the race. Unbelievable. So, on to lap four now. Perez leads the way. Charles Leclerc in second, just half, about five tenths down the road from him. Verstappen, second down the road from him. And Carlos Sainz in fourth, so it's a Red Bull. One to four with the two Mercedes cars in fifth and sixth, just behind them. And you've got Lando Norris is already one point, well, no, he's, yeah, he's about two seconds behind the two Mercedes. So you can already see the gap between the top three cars and the cars behind as I now on lap five going into the final corner onto the straight I'm now going to start trying to attack 
Mick Schumacher again. I'm going to have to use ERS. You can already see I'm now six laps in. I'm down to single digits on my ERS. I'm, I'm really, really struggling on these straights to keep up with the AI, but just, just managing to do it. I am only four tenths away, so I've, I'm in the DRS range as well, and I'm about 1.6, 1.7 ahead of Latifi as Schumacher locks up into turn eight. I say thank you very much, and that will get me up to the lofty heights of P18. So from last on the grid up to P18 inside the first six laps with the worst car, or well, the second to worst left, sorry, second worst car on the grid, I will take that as now on lap seven, Vettel. He does the exact same thing. He locks up his right rear. I'm not close enough, annoyingly, to be able to make the move, but that turn has already got two people, so definitely something to look out for. That is a major overtaking place as Vettel locks up his left rear going through turn 10, so what is going on? Vettel really, really struggling on those hard tires, but I still, still can't get near him, but I am going to have ERS, I'm going to use DRS as well, going down the main straight, but literally I can't get close to Vettel, the speed of that car, he's going to defend, but Schumacher literally completely does me on straight line speed going down the straight, does me around the right hand side, and I thought Vettel was turning, was going onto the right side to try and defend from me, but he wasn't, he was actually trying to defend from Schumacher, so what a move from Schumacher, and he has absolutely done me, and he's done Vettel as well, he's onto lap 9, I'm going to make the dive down the inside, I lock up as well, but it's the, literally the only place I can really see that I'm going to be able to make any overtakes in this race, I collide with Vettel, but it is what it is, no damage done as I have to ride the curb slightly, bit of a tricky braking into turn 10, but I managed to get the move done on Vettel, much needed, up to P18, and now I've just got to try and chase down Mick Schumacher, but without that mistake, Hopefully, I can try and do it as the laps go on, as now we're on to lap 11. Sergio Perez still leads the way from Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, and Carlos Sainz behind them. And Lewis Hamilton is now five seconds behind the Ferrari and Red Bull. So really showing that those two teams are definitely the two fastest teams on the grid at the moment. Absolutely no doubt whatsoever as Lando Norris is now a further 3.7 seconds behind the Mercedes so he's doing okay to try and keep up with them but he's also putting some decent distance between himself and Alonso who's having a bit of a battle with Valtteri Bottas behind him in ninth and it looks like Ricardo is then 2.6 seconds behind him and he's got a bit of a train behind him he's got Magnussen, Ocon, Gasly, Sonoda all behind him trying to chase him down I think Guan Yu Zhou He's a little bit further behind. He's about 2.5 seconds behind Sonoda. So, Guan Yu Zhou pretty much driving around an island on his own. Albon as well. We've got Mick Schumacher in P17. And I'm starting, starting to close the gap. I'm only 0.5 seconds away from him. Vettel now 2.6 behind me. So, I think those, those hard tyres, that choice of hard tyre, bit of a strange one as Lance Stroll way down the grid. He is almost 14 seconds behind Latifi. So, he is having an absolute shocker on that hard tyre, and I think Aston Martin will definitely think twice about trying to use that hard tyre in other races. As on to lap 13 now, I was due to go into the pits this lap as the pit window had opened, but you'll see Schumacher's gone in, but I've kept going, because to be honest, I actually feel right on these medium tyres. I don't really feel like there's too much wear on them. I feel like I'm getting some decent pace. I was staying with Schumacher, so my thought process is, if I can go on for maybe one more lap, maybe two, depending on how I feel, I can try and kind of go for the, the overcut. But I have gone in on lap 14. I was kind of struggling a little bit towards the latter end of that lap. So I am going to go in now. I'm down the pits and I'm hoping if I can get a decent turn in here, I get a decent turn in. So an optimal turn in here. So this is all down to my pit crew now, as there's a problem with the left rear. Brilliant. So... I got the optimal turn in. I think I had two greens for sector one and sector two going into the pits as well. So I think I would have had Schumacher. Yeah, there he is. I'm not going to get him. I'm not going to get him. No chance. But I am going to get Albon, who is now in P19. So I don't really know what's happened to him. 
but he's only, well, he's not point, he's only one tenth of a second behind me. He's going to go for the move down the inside and he's going to get me. I'm just so slight contact with the rear tyre, but to be honest, I've just got no grip whatsoever. I've, I've heard people say online that these hard tyres are so difficult to warm up and it is literally like driving on ice. I, I feel like I've got no grip whatsoever as he, he just takes me absolutely with ease no difficulty whatsoever i'm literally just trying to hang on but he is just accelerating i'm gonna to have to ride the curb as i break late and i spin and that is not gonna help the cause whatsoever he's now already 3.2 seconds ahead of me so stroll now right up my backside so that really really didn't help me but those hard tires are just so difficult to warm up as we're now looking at carlos Sainz in p2 Leclerc comes out, so he comes out behind Leclerc, so no change there. He does, however, come out ahead of Max Verstappen, so I don't really know what happened to that Red Bull in the pits, but whatever it is, Max Verstappen now in P4, and George Russell, he's in P5, so he's overtaken Lewis Hamilton, so I don't know what is going on with these pit stops, but the Mercedes now, they've gone for the old switcheroo, as well as Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen, so... Yeah, interesting things going on here. And talking about switcheroo, you've got Alonso now. He's trying to go down the outside of Sebastian Vettel in turn one. Vettel has somehow got himself up to P8 on lap 17. So obviously he's probably the only person who hasn't gone in the pits. Now he did manage to hold on, but Lance, uh, not Lance Stroll, sorry, Fernando Alonso is going to have another bite of the cherry and he is going to be able to make the move, go around the outside, make it stick, and he's going to get ahead of Sebastian Vettel, who is surely now got to be struggling on those hard tyres on lap 17. But speaking of struggling, Sergio Perez down the main straight. Charles Leclerc within less than a tenth. He's going to go down the inside. And I thought he was going to try and make the move into turn one. He is. And he manages to make it stick. So Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari will go back into P1. He returns to the top of the field. And Perez can do nothing. He's not close enough. He's got DRS, but he's not close enough. And he will have to settle for P2. Carlos Sainz now 2.5 seconds down the road in P3. Verstappen, George Russell and Lewis Hamilton behind him. Lando Norris now 7 seconds behind Alonso. 7 seconds behind him with Daniel Ricciardo making up the final position in the top 10. You've got Magnussen, Ocon, Gasly, Sonoda. So not really too many changes, Guan Yu Zhou down in 15th, Schumacher now, he's overtaken Vettel who is in the pits as Albon now up to 17th overtakes him as well but speaking of Vettel, he comes out of the pits right alongside myself, I'm going to go around the outside, unfortunately Vettel, he had to obviously break early, I'm going to be able to make the move and I retain P18 with Vettel behind me but Vettel will be on the medium tyre so going to be interesting to see whether or not he can catch me up as going into going into P10, sorry, uh, turn 10, Ricardo. Ricardo, there was yellow flags, he's off. What happened to him? So he's going down, everything looks fine, and he's just spun it. He's gone full 360 on turn 10, and Ricardo has had an absolute mare. He goes tumbling, tumbling down the order, and he's now stuck. Presumably, he's waiting for everyone else okay, to pass him before he can regain the track and the safety car is out so I have made the executive decision after three laps on the hard tyre to go on to the softs now in my head I'm thinking here we've got 10 laps left by the time the safety car by the time I've done my pit stop which hopefully will be optimal let's have a look to see if it is it is optimal so hopefully there's no issues now with my pit crew this time but my thought process is, if I go onto the soft tyre, we're probably, we're probably going to be following the safety car for what? Two, three laps? And we are going to be following the safety car for two, three laps. So my thought process is, if I go on the soft tyre, I've now only got, what, seven to eight laps to try and make some moves from 20th on the grid. As Charles Leclerc on lap 22, the safety car goes in and he will lead us off. And Charles Leclerc, Perez, is so close behind him. Is Perez going to be able to make the move going down into turn one? I don't think he's going to be close enough. He's not going to be close enough. Verstappen's not going to be close enough to Sainz either. So normality resumes. But Alonso 
makes the dive down the inside and he's gone past both the, both the Mercedes. What is going on? Fernando Alonso, the veteran, makes the move, makes the dive and showing he very much still has it. Russell trying, trying to fight him but to no avail. Schumacher also, he has a great start. He's up to P14 off the line. Vettel down into P17. Ricardo's had a bit of a shock. Shocker, sorry. He's down to P18. And I am still behind Latifi. So my decision to go to the softs, not working exactly as planned as I tried to go down the inside. I get stuck on the curb. And Latifi will have the better exit. And he will be able to retain P19. I'm going to try and give it another go, but not close enough. I have to force Lance Stroll wide as he is now right behind me on the mediums. But Vettel now really, he's now struggling. You've got Guan Yu Zhou trying. Is Vettel trying to make the move on Guan Yu Zhou? I think he is, you know. They both look like, no, Zhou's on the hard, Vettel's on the medium. So Vettel will be quick. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him move up the order in these last few laps. But speaking of moving up the order, Fernando Alonso is in P5. He's absolutely done the two Mercedes off the line from the, from the exit of the safety car. So he's had a great restart and speaking of restarts i'm now going to go and try and make the move on the tfi i'm going to use my battery as much as i can i've got some decent speed but the the ai speed of that williams so early in this race in this season is still still so much better than us i'm going to try and squeeze the tfi out and i do eventually manage to make the move stick and now ricardo is the next target but i can see there's almost like three or four wide up ahead of me and this is going to work in my favor because if there's about four cars squabbling up ahead i can just try and be patient and just try and follow them and this will help me close the gap between the four of them i think they're double stacked too wide heading down into turn eight i'm going to try and make the move oh very close almost make contact with ricardo he's having his own little battle with albon albon will have the inside line but further on i'm going to slightly go wide on lap 24 there's green flags, there was a yellow flag, I'm not really sure who that is, Albon gets a bit of a tricky, tricky exit off that turn, someone's off, it's Hamilton, it's Lewis Hamilton, is out of the session, so things go bad to worse for Lewis Hamilton, getting overtaken by Alonso on the restart, and then going out of the race immediately afterwards, as I'm now going to make the move on Ricardo, we will hopefully go back and have a look to see how Hamilton went out. I make the move on Ricardo. I've got much better straight line speed on these soft tyres. And I am now up into P16. And so far, going onto the softs, it didn't look like anyone else went into the pits when I did. So looking like an inspired decision by me so far. But time will tell whether or not these soft tyres will stay with me on the last couple of laps. As Vettel, a little bit of a tweak out of the rear from him. I managed to go past him without too many problems. And Guan Yu Zhou is my next target onto lap 25 i'm going to go around the outside of him and i make it look easy i've got so much more grip on the softs than he will on the hard tire and i am now up into p14 so from last on the grid on lap 25 i'm into p14 and speaking of making overtakes george russell now into turn one is surely going to try and make the overtake on fernando alonso Alonso though manages to hold on but surely Russell he's going to have DRS he's going to have a second bite of the cherry going into turn four bit of a wiggle he's going to go around the outside what a camera angle by the way that looks incredible as George Russell goes around the outside he's going to have more traction off the exit he's going to make it stick and he returns to P5 and Alonso down to P6 so that Mercedes definitely the faster car than the Alpine Alonso's bravery and skill will not be enough as now Lando Norris is going to try and make the move on lap 28 one lap away from the final lap of the race but Alonso manages to defend he's going to go to the inside Norris is going to do what George Russell tried to do just a few laps earlier he's going to go around the outside is he going to have the better traction they are wheel to wheel I think he is just no he's not they're still wheel to wheel unbelievable stuff between the two of them but Norris is going to have a better line and he is going to be able to make the move going into turn eight so Alonso now back down into p7 and normality resumes as now on to the last lap of the race I'm closing in on Schumacher I'm now 2.9 seconds ahead of Guan Yu Zhou but I have lost 
DRS as you can see on the MFD in the bottom right and my tires are slowly starting to go away from me so I don't think I'm going to be able to bring it home on this final lap past Schumacher but speaking of bringing it home Charles Leclerc from P1 on the grid he overtook Sergio Perez and he will win the Bahrain Grand Prix the opening Grand Prix of the season Sergio Perez in second Sainz makes up the podium Verstappen in P4 and George Russell in P5 and as for me I will come down the straight to finish the race in P14 and I am absolutely delighted with that no points today but a very very solid solid race and an inspired decision to go on the soft tires so inexperienced in terms of my fuel decisions and inexperienced in terms of my qualifying decisions but very happy with that very happy it hardly looked in doubt Anthony tell me what was it that helped them achieve this success I feel like consistency was probably the key today there's being quick and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap if you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. So Charles Leclerc wins the very first race of this My Team career mode. Sergio Perez in P2 and Carlos Sainz rounding up a double podium for Ferrari. Verstappen, well, I'm not really sure what happened to him. He just didn't seem to have the pace today at all. And George Russell, the only Mercedes to take points after a disaster of an opening race for Lewis Hamilton. As for us, 14th for me, no points, but I am very, very happy with that result to kick off the season. Good strategic decision we did have a slow pit stop which who knows if that had gone better could have seen us higher up the standings maybe investment in the pit crew side of things might be something worth doing earlier than perhaps i thought it would be as for my teammate such a shame about his second lap dnf all of the durability talk pre-race right out the window so difficult to really get any kind of understanding as to what the true pace of the car actually is at the moment as for constructors Ferrari and Red Bull already looking like the two teams that are going to fight it out at the top after just one race. And down near us, ourselves, Alpha Tauri, Aston Martin and Williams, the teams that weren't able to pick up any points today. I'm not expecting it to stay like that for Alpha Tauri and I'm guessing Aston Martin will likely make some more significant upgrades as the season goes on as well. So the real battle for me is going to be between ourselves and Williams. I just want to make sure we're not lost. That's, that's pretty much where I'm setting my and my expectations so far anything better than that well that would be that would be great anyway if you have enjoyed this episode please feel free to like and subscribe i am going to be going through the entire career mode and aiming to get episodes out every three days so there'll be plenty more content to come thanks everyone for watching